Hey YouTube, it's Zion Prepper here, and I'm going to do a quick video on H3N2 and H3N2V. And what I want to explain is the differences, and really it's a, it's a nomenclature change that I do believe CDC established in January of this year. And so once again, two different influenza A types, um, H3N2 an H3N2 variant. Now obviously they're H3N2 so they have almost everything in common but there's one component that is significantly different from the variant than from the H3N2. Now let's review H3N2. It does contain genetic, genetic material from pigs and it can infect birds and mammals. Um, that's nothing new. We know, we know that. And what we also know is that it has a minimal human to human jump which means um, one human in passing it on to another human is an extremely low probability. Though there have been um, instances in Asia where workers who work with swine or who work in a swine uh, market have contracted H3N2, but really it's never been determined how they, they, they received the H3N2 or how they contracted it. Now we'll talk about H3N2 variant. And it's a variant swine, swine origin influenza virus, and it's found in humans, and this one has a human-to-human -human spread component. That's what the V means, variant, it means there's a human-to-human -human spread component. And this is getting a lot of press. You look at Time Magazine, Newsweek, there's a significant number of scientific uh, articles out there that are extremely credible that are talking about, or not talking about it, but describing what's going on. We know factually that 12 people with this new swine flu strain live in Indiana, Iowa, Maine, Pennsylvania, and in West Virginia. So they've contracted this. Um, the CDC is kind of reserved in their opinion now, um, not making a whole lot out of it because it's an extremely small population base. But the consensus of experts is, is that if this H3N2 variant um, spreads to a significant number of the population is going to reach a pandemic stage. But here's the other thing you got to consider is the flu vaccine. And our, typically our flu vaccines are, are based on predicting the mutaci mu mutations excuse me, of H1N1, H3N2, H1N2, and influenza B. So basically what they do is they look at the past year and say this is the strains that we saw last year. They then do some modeling that says, okay, we think these are the strains that we're going to see in the upcoming year. And based on that data, they make their flu vaccine. Well, H3N2 variant is not part of that equation of the flu vaccine. Therefore, there's no vaccine to stop it at this time. And the, the other interesting thing is when you look at this is the H3N2 variant as well as H3N2 um, affects younger people more than older people. And when you think about it, it kind of makes sense. Younger people have been in the world less, obviously, than older people. Therefore, they've been exposed less, less to the environment, less to viruses, etc. Therefore, their immune system is more, um, more susceptible to a virus than an older person who's been around, who's experienced an H1N1 epidemic. You know, I think the last one was, what, 1980? I can't remember. But they've already, the older generation's already been exposed to that, therefore they have the antibodies and the immune defense to fight that off. The younger people do not. And um, I read articles, 16, 17-year-olds being infected. Now, the other data, and it's very limited, so take this for what it's worth, is, you know, it has a 50 to 60% kill rate. But there have been, um, there's not a whole lot of people out there that have contracted it to die to substantiate that number to say that's what it is. Nevertheless, once again, experts agree this can and probably will be a pandemic if it if it um, spreads at all. So, if you have any different input, please give it to me. But uh, the whole purpose of this was to make you aware of H3N2 and H3N2 variant. Zion Prepper saying thanks for listening and have a great day.